the city of Fort Lauderdale was devastated by a terrible hurricane in 1926, destroying many of the buildings. Constructing this fire station was the city's first public works project following that disaster. The city commission had a mind to make a statement that the city was going to come back better than ever, so this fire station was the result. They engaged a famous local architect uh, by the name of Francis Abreu, and um, they gave him instructions to uh, design and create a fire station that made a statement to Fort Lauderdale and its people that the city was going to come back, and he did that. He designed a, a fire station with a rotunda. On the outside of the windows are unique architectural eyebrow treatments inside the building. It features wood beam ceilings, a fireplace, inlaid tile floors, um, and a, a variety of uh, chandeliers and other very interesting architectural features. Station 3 went in service as a uh, Fort Lauderdale fire station in 1926. Uh, it came out of service in uh, the year 2004 and uh, served for most of the uh, years in between as an active firehouse serving the west side of the city of Fort Lauderdale. I was stationed here in the early uh, 1980s uh, up through the early 90s. Um, I was here as a, a firefighter, a driver, a lieutenant, and uh, spent a lot of time in, in out of the station when it was in active service. It wasn't brought to my attention until approximately January of 2004 that uh, perhaps something unusual was taking place here at the firehouse. I was a, a division chief and uh, I uh, was on B shift and we had reports of firefighters that had accepted a new bid that took place on January 1st that there were a lot of strange and unusual events occurring here at uh, the old West Side Fire Station. This was my bedroom. There was a bed here. I was facing that way, laying on my side, facing out towards the day room. We, uh, we all went to sleep. I was laying there, all the lights were out. Everybody was sleeping in their bunk rooms straight down the hallway here. I was laying there, all of a sudden the lights pop on. So I get up, I go out there, and the light switch had actually come on. I shut the light switch off. Came back, I laid back in bed, I was laying there. Three, four minutes later, the light pops back on again. I go back out, I look, there's nobody out there, so I figured somebody in the firehouse was messing with me. I go into all the bedrooms, everybody was sleeping, everybody was already there. Went back out, I shut the light back off, came back into bed and laid towards the wall this time. I didn't want to don't want to upset them anymore. We have a PA system that in, you could go into the kitchen and if you keyed it up you could basically call everybody for chow or if there was a call or whatever and then during the night at different times of the night it would key itself up and it had a, a button on it that you had to click so that would happen where it key itself up. I was getting ready to go to bed my partner had already uh, settled down that night and was sleeping I put all my belongings on the end table next to the bed, which uh, was a phone, keys, and a radio for the truck. I proceeded to go to sleep. I'd say probably about a, an hour later, I had heard a bunch of racket from the end table. I thought somebody was just messing with me and moving all my stuff. I turned the light on and everything was all over the place. The keys were on the ground, the radio, everything had fallen off. And I looked at my partner, I got up, and she was sound asleep. Uh, where I actually physically woke her up, and you could tell it wasn't a joke, it was, you know, something that happened. We had several uh, reports with the TV where either the image of the ghost was uh, reflected in the television screen itself, or was, was seen as a, uh, a more of a reflection. This used to be a uh, kitchen area with a table, there used to be computers all along here. At the time I was sitting here, it was late, we were running calls all night, and uh, I was up doing a report. I was writing it, facing towards the bay area, and at the bay there was to be a small window, about a one by one, facing into the bay. And for some reason I looked up and it looked like someone was looking into the, into the kitchen area from the bay. So I got up, I went out there, I thought someone had broke into the station. I went out and looked around all the trucks and all the closets and everything, there was nobody there. A lot of times we'd go out on a call and there would be one light on, which was the one right by the nightstand by the, the door. And then you'd come in and every single light in the station would be on. Or vice versa, you'd leave and every single light in the station, when you came back, every single light would be off. Picking up on these stories, I started to do a little investigation. And uh, 
I didn't tell anyone about what I had found, but that there was a firefighter by the name of Robert Leland Knight, 28 years old, with 11 days on the job, that was killed uh, either on December 26th or de December 27th, 1940. He was electrocuted when stepping off the back of a truck. Uh, he stepped into a pool of water that had been uh, charged with a down line. It was a freak winter storm. Uh, they had responded to a fire out on West Broward Boulevard in the area of Broward and I-95 where he stepped off the back of the truck. Unfortunately, they didn't have rubber boots for him that would fit his big feet at the time. And when he stepped off, he was electrocuted. Having the rubber boots might have saved his life, but in any case, he was electrocuted with 11 days on the job. And uh, the information that we uncovered is that he had responded to that fire from this firehouse. The story at the station that you would tell the new guys about the ghost, and then you'd try and have a little fun with them. And there was one time we were, me and the other guy on rescue were in the bunk, and I was sitting there giving the heat because they had told me that he's very phobic. So I'm like, oh, you know, you know, firefighter night, and, you know, this place is haunted, and then all, you know, lights will go on, lights will go off, and I was just having a good time with them. And uh, about 10 minutes later, all of a sudden, the fan in the room went on, and the lights in the room went on. And uh, he thought I was messing with him. I hadn't touched anything. I have no doubt that the, the personnel that have uh, told me and others of their events and the occurrences here at the fire station, I have no doubt that they're telling the truth. Uh, this is a large cross-section of firefighters, male, female, uh, African-American, you name it, they've seen it. And they all had a similar story, uh, similar occurrences. Mm -hmm. Uh, over probably a, uh, a four or five month period when that began sometime around January of 04 and uh, to my knowledge they continue to this day with personnel that have been working in and around the museum to get it ready as an educational and museum. As we were cleaning we noticed something go by the window. It was fairly transparent and of course we had heard that there was supposedly something spiritual going on here because of a fireman that had passed away early on and we just kind of attributed it to well it's just one of those things. The next day or the day after we were back cleaning another area uh, along the main corridor back to the bedrooms and the front door on the museum is rather massive. It's a very large solid wooden door that is always kept locked and as we cleaned the area in the hallway the door opens and slams. We knew that it was locked because we had just finished cleaning the rotunda area and had made sure that the door was locked. So within a matter of minutes, it had been unlocked, not by my associate or myself, opened and closed and remained unlocked. If there is something going on, that was the most logical choice that it would be firefighter night. Uh, as I said, nothing bad has ever happened, so that pretty much falls into the right category of a firefighter. You're typically never a believer until you actually have something happen to you.